you know, I, I think it would just be good wicket. There's no price on it, so, you know, there won't be... Anything. Yeah, I'm not going to argue with you. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Lockdown with myself, Yash Khandor, exclusively on the international cricket network, ICN360. Someone who made a debut at the age of 30, but took only two one-day international games to make a mark for himself on the cricketing landscape. With a 69-ball 89 against the West Indies, our guest on the show tonight is someone who is flagged by Cricket Canada as one of the top three players who have ever graced the Canadian colours. In the October of 2008, in the Canada T20 tournament, he hit 10 sixes. That is more than either Sanat Jayasurya or Shahid Afridi, known for their six-hitting ability, who played in the very same tournament. Our guest on the show tonight is someone who also played the same league and got the highest runs for his team, averaging over 60 in the entire series. Scoring 93 from just 70 balls, coming in at number 7 versus a full-strength England side in the 2011 warm-up game. Our guest on the show tonight is known for his ability to tongue the ball into orbit with seeming ease. Without further delay, allow me to welcome on our show tonight Canadian superstar, international cricketer, all-rounder, Pakistan-born, Rizwan Chima. Hey, hi, Rizwan. How are you? Good. How are you, man? I'm doing pretty pretty well. I mean, it's lockdown. It's tough times, but we're coping with it. How's it with you? Uh, yeah, I'm, um, I'm doing the same thing, you know, trying to get... Now we're kind of getting, kind of used to the, uh, the situation and uh, just hoping things go back to normal and we go back out there and play some cricket. Absolutely. I think everybody, as all the cricket fans are waiting to go out and play cricket and also watch cricket, which doesn't seem very likely soon. Not on the grounds, at least, maybe sitting back home. So, obviously, firstly, thank you so much for being on the show. A very warm welcome to you, and it's a pleasure to host you. Thank you, man. Thank you, Josh. All right. So, I'll go straight to the business. I'll not talk about the past. I'm going to show you a clip. It's a 40-second clip that broke a thousand hearts. All, right. All the USA-based cricket fans. I was in the US at that point. I recently oh. moved to Toronto. <laughs> I had my loyalties tied with USA cricket at that point, and no, no. one believed that's going to happen. So let me start. I give you the background. Let's yeah. play it for the fans. All right, I think that was enough to, uh, you know, rub the wounds with some salt maybe, but I don't intend to do that. What was going through your mind at that point? I mean, I'm pretty sure even your own teammates might have thought like, this is this is it, this is almost done for Canada, but you had different ideas. Yeah, the uh, only thing was in there was confidence to just hit one, man. Um, I, I knew uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit one for sure, you know, because uh, uh, even even before uh, that six and before that over, a uh, few of the guys from US side, uh, they were just passing by, you know, after the over and stuff that keep telling me, game is over, game is done, you know, Chima White <laughs> is over. And I, I was just joking and everything was, so I was telling them, you know, it's not over until it, I'm here. Mm -hmm. So uh, i never been in this kind of situation before because I, I always opened the inning and I never get to point where, you know, in the last over, 10 runs needed and you were there. You were either you got out or the game is done. So, um, that, was, that was the first time, actually, for me. And I'm glad I made it through. Absolutely. I think the whole of Canada was glad. And I think Cecil Parvez played a big role there, not only in the super over, even just giving you support. I felt a little sad for him when everybody was just going around gaga around you i know you hit the big six but i think he played well too so Cecil, good job man we, you did not want to notice that Cecil is my buddy for a long time you know he's, he's uh -huh. like in my team for a long time too and uh, he's one of those guys who always uh, play for the team so um, he, he, he's, he was more happier than me in, in that moment he was, he was definitely he's a one of a kind of guy who who, who loves to be happy with other success Totally. So now, now that we've got this out of the way, let's go. Let's do a blast from the past. Everybody talks about you making a debut at the age of 30, which is considered a little late when it comes to international cricket. 
but obviously you had your own plans and it did not take you more than two one day internationals like i mentioned for that blistering knock of 89 against the west indies walk us through your journey i mean it must not have been a smooth road it's never is right never is right a lot of people don't know the story behind it so can you please walk us through it yeah um i've been in the scene for a while and then you know uh, keep keep performing in the local league keep scoring runs uh, and you know as always you know uh, you know when you when you when you out there and doing well and mm -hmm. you and really want to be a play for the national side uh -huh. so you know there was times when you frustrate and you know you say oh why not me man why why i'm not getting chance and all those things uh -huh. but i believe you know that there is there's a time for you and uh, i i i i know uh, i done really well in 2005 actually like few years before that so i i really hope i will get chance to play for canada at that time but but unfortunately it didn't happen but i think uh, i'm glad it happened at the right time and i was ready to take that opportunity i i i, I believe you know you you need to be ready when time comes you you should be ready to just take it mm -hmm. so i know it was a bit late but i'm i'm happy uh, it, it it came when i really really needed it didn't come to me when i i was no my might not have uh, uh value it properly mm -hmm. totally absolutely so then moving on to the next big game i have this image here you're talking the big sixes it was a full fledged english lineup with stuart broad at the peak of his form i think he got five wickets in that game it's a I, of course it's a warm up game but leading to the world cup england losing to canada that can be the headlines for the rest of the tournament so and of course you came into bat at seven like you said you usually open the batting or play in that at the top of the order but you came in late your half of the side was gone for like what 40 on the board and then you scored those 93 runs of like in no time what happened that day what is happening i think you hit broad for two sixes as well uh you know uh, he hit uh, hit me on the ribs of the first ball and second ball was on my head so oh, wow. <laughs> that that might have changed something in me so uh, you know uh, obviously you you go out there and then um, they they were recently back from you know winning the ashes so they were pretty high mm -hmm. so obviously all their bowlers were right on the top so um and when i got hit uh, first two ball on my body it was just uh it's, it's you know it's, it's it's wakes you up a little bit and tells you, you know, this is this is not a it's not going to be easy but you got to be man up and go there and you know do what you know to so then i played what i know to play so it was just uh, con connecting everything i guess Yeah, I often hear this term when it comes to you. It's a sea ball, hit ball. It sounds yeah. very layman to people, but I think that's probably one of the best approaches. I remember Virender Sehwag saying the same thing uh, back in the day, and I think that resonates very well with the kind of game you have. So that's that's great for you. And I think I'm talking about the same tournament now. And then I think you remember, but I I'll just put it for you. Who is the bowler that I'm talking about? Yeah. Who's the bowler I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Murli, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that the that picture is on my wall, so I cannot forget forget that. You know, hitting to the end is uh, uh, one of the best thing for me. So I definitely remember. Uh, so it's a uh, it was it was you know um, always. Uh, I think when when some someone comes and you know they're the yeah, they're the best in the world. Mm -hmm. that gives you a bit of more energy to make sure you know this this is your time to do well against these guys if you really want people to know you so it, it was it was a, a great experience i'm glad i'm the only one who hit him sixes in that 2011 world cup so <laughs> that is actually true even in that world cup final when gambhir and dhoni played so well against murli they only hit boundaries nobody hit him for a six that's actually very true i remember looking up that that stats Yeah. We'll talk about you and sixes very soon, but before that, there's another iconic picture that I have. There's another one with Kamran Akmal. Yeah. How did this feel? I mean, these are guys you looked up to when you grew up. These are the guys you wanted to become, maybe or like you idolized them, and then you go out to play against them, get their wickets. How does it feel? Yeah, it gives you it gives you good feelings, but you know, uh, if um, uh, 
if you i i believe you know you if you want to be out there and if you want people to know you with the, you know not just the, so like you know you don't have to just perform in local level or uh, your domestic structure you when the tough team comes tough bowling comes you you need to stand up at that time so i think uh, and, and every time there was a big nation a test nation against me i did pretty well i think uh, um i i really enjoyed a tough competition i believe yeah probably and that got the best out of you so that's good your uh, buddy from the usa cricket team roy silva just said hi to you so <laughs> he's actually oh. watching this program live it's nice to have him hey roy how are you welcome to the viewership today hopefully we'll get you on a show soon uh, so coming like we discussed all the great games oh look at that he's just talking about the last ball six he says we never forget you hit the last ball six <laughs> He is a big ball beater in the US too, you know, himself. Oh man, he he is like one of the bulliest cricketers in, especially in domestic cricket that, that I've seen. I, I bowl to him. You, you can ask him. Yeah. I, I I'm happy that I got his wicket at the end of the day, even though he hit us so bad. But, we play. Yeah. There are so many tournaments in US with the same <laughs> team. So I'm always happy he's in our side. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So there are a few fan questions actually, Rizwan, and they're very interesting. So I wanted to come to that point about your part outside of cricket. Like, what do you do after cricket or outside of cricket? It's a very interesting question by Supriya Desai. She's one of our very avid fans. She follows cricket, especially North American cricket, very closely. So she's like, she wanted to know if you're coaching Ontario women's cricket team. That's what she read or heard somewhere. And she wanted to know your experiences and future goals for the Canadian cricket team. Yeah, always, you know, I always like to help every time uh, the, you know, uh, pro provincial or uh, local um, people ask me to, you know, help out in a, in, a, in a coaching and all these things. Uh -huh. So, uh, um, a really good experience, uh, you know, giving a few tips to the girls and, you know, you, um, and you're surprised to see there's so much of talent in, in, in the women uh, uh, teams. So it was a, it was really good to be out there and you know learning uh, you know uh, two you know different things about uh, women cricket. It, it was quite experience and um, I really enjoyed it and always there to help in even in the future as well. Perfect. There's actually another question that she had. So everybody knows you are a fitness freak and you always focus on fitness. We see your videos across social media. She, she wants to know, Supriya wants to know, how are you managing to keep up your fitness routine without being like actually hitting the gym? Or do you actually hit the gym or not? Any useful tips that will help other players as well? Yeah, you know, I definitely can't really go to the gym these days. But um, for me, it's, it's, it's easy because I know my routine, what I need to do. I have, I have a few things at home for, for my fitness uh, purposes. So, but you know, anything you do every day, uh, you don't really have to uh, run a, a proper circuit or anything. You know, you just, anything you get up and do something, give yourself a half an hour, it doesn't matter, you know, a few push-ups, few sit-ups, few burpees, even at your, at your, you know, you just find a place in your house. So, mm -hmm. um, anything you do, it'll, it'll definitely keeps you going, keeps you, you know, if you, it'll, it'll makes you keep going for that day and then next day you do it again. I know we don't have uh, opportunity to go to gyms, and I don't know about USA, but here we can we can still go outside, mm -hmm. and I, I just go outside and run a bit too. Uh, you know, find place where you know nobody's around, so I keep that right. social distancing in mind to just make sure uh, I do my part out there. So um, fitness is a definitely a key thing for me. I'll you know because uh, that that that's not only cricket; it it really helps you in your in your life otherwise totally totally some some tip for our youngsters there definitely i was mentioning sixes i was mentioning a lot of records that get associated with you with canadian cricket there is one record that was recently uh published on the hindu the sports star magazine which is uh, a sports section for uh, the hindu newspaper back in india this was in reference to something called ivi for our fans who don't really know so ivi is a new metric that has been designed so the previous one was called HSI, now it's called IVI. It's all about the impact that an innings or a batsman or a player or a spell of bowling has had 
on a given uh, in a given game. So there are some amazing names there. There's Kapil Dev, there's Viv Richards, there's John Davison, your mate himself. I think the reason was because of his amazing innings against the West Indies where he just battered and bruised them badly. And then you're at number five. You're in company of David Gower, Fab Duplessis, Jayasurya, some of the biggest names in the game. I, I'm pretty sure you must have looked at this. How did it feel when you saw your name up there? Yeah, it's always, always feel good, you know, feels good. Uh, to be uh, in that list, it's not a, it's not a, uh, just a, uh, you know, the the your uh, heroes in that list. So so you know you the people you really uh, uh, watch uh, growing up. So it, it's it feels good to be out there with that you know in in those names. So it, it's it, it's an honor and pleasure for me to be in that list for sure. That's great. So I actually had a quick question for you. I was going to put it in the rapid fire, but I probably want you to elaborate a little on it. Yeah. So obviously you grew up in Pakistan and then you moved in the early 2000s to Canada. Was it ever your dream to play for the Pakistan cricket team? And if it was, what is bigger for you? Is it playing for Canada or playing for the Pakistan cricket team? Uh, you know, uh, when I was growing up, uh, cricket was, you know, um, something I, I always wanted to be in some you know out there and play cricket for any team and uh, i had full support of my father i when i moved here he uh, only thing he always asked me if uh, what i'm doing in cricket so <laughs> uh, that was the uh, you know a full best support i i got in for for cricket and i really wanted to make it through to somewhere so uh, you know i was here, happened to be in in in, uh, in canada so uh, I'm, I'm, you know, uh, fortunate enough to make it to the national side, and that was the father's dream as well. So uh, I'm glad I, I'm able to do that. Absolutely, I'm pretty sure he's very proud of you as well. Looking at what you've achieved. Uh, another quick question would be: Have you ever considered playing in the T20 franchise? Looking at your style of batting, obviously it's perfect for you to. Uh, play T20 cricket. So, have you thought or considered a CPL or maybe even an IPL for that matter? Uh, I was actually, uh, you know, the second IPL draft. I was in the last 50 players at, at that time. I, I started in 2008, and uh, four years was like pre bank you know, for me. So, I got into that IPL uh, last 50 players, but unfortunately, it didn't happen at that time. Uh -huh. And, uh, didn't really, you know, then IPL got into the different direction and there was always, you know, looking for the team players from uh, Test Nations and big names and other things. Yeah. So um, other leagues, obviously, yeah, you know, you, you it's, it's difficult for uh, associate players, especially from this part of the world to, you know, nobody really think you're good enough. But I know I, I am, but, you know, uh, they think, you know, they they place from this part so now since gt20 is happening here i mm -hmm. think uh, uh, you know people uh, are really uh, watching the local players to play in that and doing well performing well so this is a um, um, good sign and um, i was actually in a, a bpl uh, i guess uh -huh. like uh, i think twice uh, in the in that tournament well, so um, and then i played mcl so I played a um, few other leagues. I was the first one from North America who, who played in uh, BPL at that time, the first edition. Mm -hmm. so, um, you know, things were going okay in terms of 2020 games and stuff. But I'm, I'm glad I made it to few, but I'm still hopeful get more opportunity to play and beat some ball. Yep, sure. And now that we talk about North America, you being the first player to represent them in BPL, what are your thoughts on the growth of cricket just overall in North America? Obviously, it's picking up in the US. Canada has had a rich history of cricket in general. Uh, I see a lot of passion here whenever, ever since I moved here. What are your thoughts on the growth of cricket in America uh, in terms of what is the potential and what are the challenges that we have? You know, um, I believe... Um, um, this this the uh, north american um, i know maybe not so good in cricket but uh, cricket was you know very you know it's been there for long 
Mm-hmm. So it's not like they're very new to cricket. Canada participated in four World Cups. So mm-hmm. uh, it's not, uh, you know, something new to us. But it's always you need to grow cricket. You need to grow players. You need to provide them um, a system where where they improve, where they, you know, if you're, if someone if someone played in the under 19 world cup you need to make sure there are like you know at least five players comes into the national side so you need to provide them a system where they stay in in, in the game not just you know just play and then just fade away so for me is always uh, you know how how long you can go opportunity you will get mm-hmm. it's not uh, uh, if you're just only looking for one opportunity and that's it, that's not good enough. Mm-hmm. You make sure when you can got one, you know, you, you you hang in there for a little bit, not just go in and go out. So, right. so they, they should put in, you know, should be more work mm-hmm. being done by the management, by the administration to, um, you know, give players a more platform to grow their game. Right, and that's a very good point you made about the under 19 then making it to the national side. What I think what you're probably reflecting is how good a grassroots level cricket is will eventually reflect how good that playing nation is. You take any top teams like India, England, West, or even Australia, or even Pakistan for that matter, it's all about the first class level being up there, and it all begins in the schools. Like it's not even direct under 19, it's the under 10s, under 13s, under 15s. So yeah, that's something that we all uh, believe what you're saying uh, is true. Uh, there's another comment from one of our viewers, Roshni. She says you're a beast batsman. I think she, where she's coming from is that Mac and the 122 that you scored. I still uh, remember watching the highlights, and I had a few friends from Tampa who were actually there at the ground, yeah. and they're like, "Hey, why don't you get Rusman on a, on an interview?" And I'm like, "Wait, what are you talking about? Like, what happened?" And he's like, "Look at this inning." And I'm like, "Wow." So. <laughs> So there are a lot of fans there that are saying hi, so I'll just post their comments here so that they know that their comments are being viewed. So uh, if you want to say hi to them, go ahead, feel free. Oh, I think you're, ha- you're hung. Like, Rizwan, can you hear us? Uh, Rizwan? Hello? I think we've lost some net, like, so there's some network issue with, uh, on Rizwan's side. Uh, we'll try and see if he, if he can be back in here. Here is being a fun conversation. I think we're almost towards the end of it. We actually had the fun rapid fire round scheduled now. So let's hope we can get Rizwan back. Uh, yeah. So I think he disconnected and he's going to connect back. So all those who are watching, I have a trivia for you guys in the meantime. Name the Sri Lankan batsman who holds the record for the mo- for the highest individual score in Test match cricket. And at one point, he held the record for the highest individual score in both formats of the game. Sorry, I meant ODI cricket, not Test. And now we have Rizwan back, and I'll wait for the folks to answer. While you were gone, I asked them a trivia to name the Sri Lankan batsman. Now that Roy is here, he might be able to answer. So Sri Lankan batsman who is the highest score in ODI cricket even today. And back in the day, he had the record for highest score in both formats. Anyway, before uh, somebody answers, uh, let's go for the rapid fire round. Uh, that's going to be a fun round where I shoot questions, dart questions at you. And what we expect in return is quick, honest answers. The quicker you answer, the more fun it gets. Oh, so. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah, you're always ready. See ball, hit ball, right? See question, answer question. So that sounds pretty much like it for you. All right, let's get started. Pakistan cricket team or the Canadian cricket team? Canadian cricket team. Afridi or John Davison? Uh, definitely John Davison. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dum Biryani or Burrito? Dum Biryani. Favorite batsman? A.B. De Villiers. Favorite bowler? These days, uh, uh, was C. Makram back in the days and Mitchell Stark right now. Oh, you have a thing for left-arm fast bowlers, don't you? Yeah. 
uh, the person that you actually idolized when you were growing up in cricket? Imran Khan. The best captain for you? Favorite captain? Yes, definitely. Best captain. I, I, I learned a lot from his captains. He had been captain uh, for the local teams and even Canada too. So I always like his style and uh, sometimes uh, people ask me, say, oh, you know, you're like, you know, you try to do stuff like him, but I really admire him as a captain and uh, uh, the way he, he changed Pakistan cricket. Absolutely. The favorite captain that you have played under? Favorite captain was Collingwood. Oh. Paul Collingwood. He, he was a legend of the game. Very nice person too. Uh, <clears throat> Oh, a lot of people sending in the message. I kind of got lost. Uh, your favorite fielder? Right. Your favorite fielder? Favorite fielder is um, these days, Ravindra Jadeja. Mm -hmm. Jadeja is really, really top of his game. It's the way he feels around. It's, you know, you, you can, he can't really miss. Uh -huh. Yeah. Somebody who gets picked as a 12th man in the side by choice, he has to be special, right? So. Definitely, definitely. Your favorite shot in cricket? Anywhere for six. <laughs> and your favorite ball? <laughs> Anything you can hit six on. Favorite USA player, USA cricketer ever, or the one that you played against? Um, many of them, obviously, but Ali Khan is my buddy, so him. I actually had the pleasure of interviewing Ali Khan during CPL 2018. Very nice guy. Hopefully, we can get him again on the show now that he's achieved so much more after that CPL. Yeah. We got him right just before that CPL. And then he ran riot for TKR back in the day. Yeah, um, I have plenty others. But yeah, he's the one who uh, every time he's in town, I run out of my budget. Yeah. <laughs> food, his food is on me always. So. <laughs> yeah, and he does love fancy cars, from what I know. He does love fancy cars. <laughs> so, if you, if you follow Bollywood, I don't know if you do. If you do, who is your favorite actor? Amir Khan. Uh, one person you hate to share the room with, from cricket, obviously. Uh, they are pretty good to me, so I don't know which one I should say. Okay, Saad bin Zafar. <laughs> okay. We'll ask Saad the same question when he comes on a show with us. He'll say my name too. <laughs> <laughs> too much love between the two of you, I guess. <laughs> that's why I said his name. <laughs> okay, that's he's nice. Probably, probably the very the most helpful for me in the room. Mm -hmm. uh, they can do many things, but he's definitely a sweetheart. But yeah. <laughs> good good cover up, I must good cover up, I must say. Yeah. Um, I think that's it. I don't. Okay, I'll ask you one more question. Uh, you batted a lot at number seven and stuff like that. So, in terms of the role of a finisher, Michael Bevan or MS Dhoni? MS Dhoni, for sure. Any other? If I don't give MS you the of these two, if you have to pick your best finisher, who will it be? I think um, MS Dhoni is probably. I will pick it anyway because uh, I, I never seen. Uh, uh, anybody's finishing the game. Uh, um, Abdul Razak, obviously, when he used to play, uh, he was one of the guy who can really, you know, change the game by himself. But MS is is a different act, is, is, and he had done it many times, not once, twice, but many times. Absolutely. I think that's it from my side. I don't really have any more rapid fire questions to shoot at you. Uh, I think it was fun for all our fans. Thank you, everybody, for joining in and for all your lovely comments. Thanks to you, uh, Rizwan, for doing the show with us and being so honest and sporty. It was fun to have you. Thank you. Thank you, Yash. Thanks for having me, man. And if you have anything to tell your fans, the stage is all yours. It's open mic for you, so just go for it. Hey, just, you know, just want to say one thing. You know, uh, I know the tough times out there, but just hang in there. Uh, things will be changed soon. And we will go back out there and, you know, start our, our, our routines and our, our lives back. So um, just um, be positive, you know, make sure whatever you do outside out there, 
make sure you keep all these um, protocols in mind, not to just you know and spread uh, anything wrong around out there. So and keep 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 doing the exercises, keep keep moving around in the house, keep make sure you know you keep your blood flow going. So that's all for me, and uh, wish you guys uh, all the best, and hope to see you all soon on the field. Perfect. Uh, once again, thank you everybody for joining in. One final comment. Let's see. Oh, trivia answer. Thank you, Supriya, for reminding me. You're absolutely right. The answer was Jay Surya. In yeah. 1997, when he beat the hell out of India at Vankere, yeah. single-handedly, he got the, I think he scored 145 or something. That's when he held the record for the highest score. Then he beat his own record a year later, again against India, scored the 189. And it still yeah. is the record for the highest score by a Sri Lankan in, in, in an individual innings. And he also held the record for the Test match score of 340, which again against India, they scored in 1998. There was yeah. one hell of that period for him. But yeah. Jayawardene broke that record when he scored the 374 or something like that, when he batted for hours along with Sangakara. So great answer, Supriya. Uh, a very well thought answer, I must say, because people get tripped into this. But there's a very well thought answer. So the trivia, fun there. Uh, hopefully, we can include more trivia here so that we can have people uh, engaging even more. So like I said, thank you everybody for joining. Thank you, Rizwan, once again. Until next time, this is Yash Kandor for the International Cricket Network ICN 360 signing off. Bye for now. Take care. Stay safe. Stay healthy. No, I, I think it will just be good wicket. There's no grass on it, so you know there won't be 